Welcome back to HRNHQ. I'm Ed DeRosa along with Sarah Albadwi, and we are ahead of week two at Keeneland Racecourse. Final grade one, Sarah, until the Breeders' Cup, I do believe it's the Queen Elizabeth Challenge Cup. And unlike the Queen's Plate, they do not rename this race, even though the Royal has uh, passed on. Long live the King. We'll have the King's Plate next year. This will always be the QE2 to commemorate Her Royal Highness's visit to the Bluegrass in 1984, and maybe not a field uh, up to uh, the standards of uh, what she meant to so many people, but uh, no surprise to see Chad Brown in the Great One Turf race. And with two. With two. No surprise to see multiple Chad Browns in a Great One race. We saw that with the First Lady. For the older ones, this is three-year-old fillies, and... Uh, I do see the favorite. McCulloch is the horse to beat. I would agree on that. And Morning Line officially not out yet, correct? Uh, I think it it was not it's out. Early. I was going to, because when I first looked at the race about an hour ago, it was not in the PPs. And then when I loaded okay. again, it was there. So, there it is. Yeah. Okay. Nick Tamara working for us. <laughs> working hard for all people, I mean, not yes. HRN. Yes. No, he's not. The Royal us. Yes. All of us. <laughs> Which we appreciate. Yeah, uh, even money, which which I would think that's about where she'll be, if not even lower. With I the short agree. View. Yep, forced to be. But, I mean, what's what's the purpose of a chat if we're both uh, <laughs> picking the Chad Brown favorite? So, who do you like to finish second? I actually like California Angel quite a bit. Okay. Uh, I thought uh, the last race was, uh, I'm a big Sheets devotee, Rags and Sheets, and one of their uh, sort of uh, patterns that they like to look for that's been written about is when a three-year-old, typically this is more early season, it's kind of a derby thing, but you know, with Phillies, they're, we're all still developing until they're four or five. When they match their two-year-old best and then get some rest, but not like a long layoff, uh, that's sometimes called an explosive pattern, and they typically move forward off that number. So we got that last out. She got an 11 on the sheets, the lower the number, the better, which was her best as a two-year-old. That's facing here, and you know the connections aren't super well known. I mean, she kind of made a name for herself last year with that win at Keeneland, and she's back here now. And uh, a total upset would be a surprise, uh, especially with the pace dynamics with McCulloch. But I do think California Angel could be running late and get a piece. And she's a great price on the morning line that we now yes. have at fifteen to one. Oh, she's very consistent horse too. You can toss all of those dirt tries. I get why they wanted to take that Absolutely. route and see if she was able to compete in a Kentucky Oaks type of field this year. But obviously this is a turf forest that does her best running on that surface. Returning to the surface, if you toss the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies, she's done nothing but hit the board at prices before. Obviously this is my type of course that <laughs> continues to outrun the odds. And I think that she could definitely get a piece in this spot. I like that she's not going to be too, too pace compromised. She doesn't have to come from way way far back as a right. closer she can kind of sit mid pack as well you can always recognize her with those big white blinkers too in any of the replays that we show for her um the horse that i think is going to be kind of the giant wild card in this race is the number seven paris peacock what do you do with this euro invader uh i'm inclined to not use because i think in a race where we have a clear favorite and then you know the other brown but it's kind of the alternative to go with these Euro types in races like this. Uh, Ragazin wise, which they do uh, do numbers for the bigger European races. She does not stack up at all, even with a horse like California Angel, let alone McCulloch. So figuring that she'll take money, just kind of, you know, sort of that default Euro I'm against. I'll be interested to see, you know, where she stacks up class ratings wise and, you know, maybe get a note from you or Gabby or Scott on physical appearance day of that could sway me to, you know, not be completely against, but on paper, I see her as being over that. I honestly don't even know that she would take money, but I guess maybe people are looking for that new face to a group or yeah. maybe the, the, the Euros are just better than the U S turf horses, which in most cases I do feel that they are, but I think the big question in this race for me is, well, two of them. One, who's going to set the pace? Because it gets the time form U.S. rating of no speed, yeah. and there's no clear front runner in this spot. And then the other I mean, question. That could be McCulloch, right? I guess. She's never really been on the lead in any of her other races, though. But if, you know, you just have the best horse in the race, and she it would be one that has some tactical speed, maybe you just go. Right. 
Yeah. Uh, she's gone is the one, I mean, even more so than the Euro who I don't like, but she doesn't fit at all. Fade. Yeah. Well, yeah. And it's unfair to even say fade, but. Toss. Not just, used. Just, yeah. Adjective. Just no, like, even if you were, like, against McCulloch and you were thinking, like, oh, I can you like, it just would be an utter and complete shock if she were to win the race. Well, I think, too, people might look at her last race and see those progressively improving fire speed figures or whatever figures you're using and think maybe she's a horse that's improving for her stakes debut. But she was also on the rail pretty much the entire time mm -hmm. at Kentucky Downs, and that was a day where you, that's definitely where you wanted to be. At Delica rode the rail the whole way. It was inside speed. Red Knight came up the rail to win. Those were horses that were taking advantage of being inside at Kentucky Downs, which was the place to be that day. And that's exactly what she did to post the upset. Her trainer is currently riding an Ofer streak of mm. uh, some 20 something. Ofer, no, Ofer 35 actually in graded stakes this year. So. Well, I tried to buck that trend last week in yeah. the Futurity and uh, got a DFL. So. Wait, wasn't it the um, the Philly version? Oh, Ace was it? Diamond? Was it Al Alcibiades? Yeah. Oh, either way. Oh, right. Because yeah. the, the Futurity had the, uh, the, the Pletcher and the Con. Yes, the Alcibiades. Yeah. You tried. It didn't work out. Yeah. And, and I mean, it's the price, whatever. But mm -hmm. you mentioned the improving figures. And that, I think that is interesting because, you know, really trying to squeeze water out of a rock here in a seven horse field. But it's one thing to say, well, that, you know, this horse can't win. I mean, every horse has just been consistently faster. So, I mean, you're just talking about needing big improvement and everyone else to regress. But I do think. If you're improving Kentucky Downs, you know, some say, oh, good fitness, and they come out of there well and run well. Maybe third at 40 to one, I mean, which in a seven horse field is a huge price. So to me, that's worth considering, especially if on track, you know, a few of them look dull or don't look like they're going to fire their best effort. That is an instance where I'll say, okay, McCoola, absolutely for me, even at four to five, I think she's the key on top. I'd much rather gamble with a horse like she's gone, who's at least improving to just be the one who finishes third again versus using the third choice in that spot. Right. And Chad Brown exacta isn't always going to no. pay. Um, although it did in the race where Gina Romantica broke her maiden. And uh, that was a race where there was a rare occasion of actual pace in the New York turf race. Right. And honestly, you might look at the fractions for that race and be like, they weren't going that fast, but for New York, yes, <laughs> they were. Um, and, then, and the Diana was a good chat exacta. Yeah, yeah. It so happens. it's it's possible, but if they stay anywhere near their morning line here, uh, not going to happen. The other question I had is where is Spenderella? I saw something because I was hoping Mora would show up here um, when they you said love Mora. I do, and when they <laughs> said they weren't going to do dirt. They wanted to focus on turf. I thought, ooh, you know, maybe I'll get to see her again mm -hmm. in the QE2. And they ended up going the local route against Older. Um, and someone mentioned, oh, well, good thing for her, Spenderella isn't showing up. And I meant to follow up on that. I'm sure DRF at the very least has something. But, yeah, just out of the Del Mar Oaks, I guess, a uh, little hiccup. I guess. But then I guess, I mean, if she was in here, would she be a single for you? Uh, I really like McCulloch. Really? Okay. Well, if Spinderella was in here, she would be a single for me. I would say it would come like if McC they were both taking equal money, I'd have to make a I, I would make a decision, I think. Okay. But I don't know. I think the Chad Brown over the Grand Motion might I don't know. They might end up being co favorites if they were both in here. Who knows? But alas. But alas, she's <laughs> not here, so I think we at least have to consider the horse that finished second to her, uh, the number five, Bella yeah. Bell. Yeah, and who, is she a speed threat? I don't know. I think it kind of depends on what the jockey tactics end up being, and it does concern me a little bit that Umberto Rispoli did try the Keeneland Spring Meet, and it did not go no. so well for him. However, this is a horse that he's ridden before, and he's familiar with, and he's had success with, so perhaps having this horse is the difference maker. Shipping in here, they do go faster on the turf in California than they do over here on the East Coast. So, I mean, maybe that she gets an aggressive ride and she goes and they don't catch her. And he had a huge opening weekend, or I guess there are two weekends, and he's had a huge opening to the uh, Santa Anita Fall Meet. So 
maybe in a better frame of mind than he was here in the spring. Wow. But yeah, Im- impossible to ignore uh, not his, his best efforts here in Lexington and, and went back to California. But getting a mountain like this and committing to shipping in, I think, somewhat mitigates those concerns. I would say so. I think I just at least have to consider the horse that's been the closest to the horse that I would right. single in a race like this, especially if we get anywhere near the price that she is on the morning line, which I think is eight to one right mm. now, which I don't know that that's quite what we'll get. But with two Chad Brown horses in the race. Uh, yeah, I'm, def- I'm definitely here. against the other Chad. And I know that's yeah. a sexy angle for a lot of people, but she just she just doesn't stack up to me. She has a really weird pedigree. Have you looked at it at all? I'm I'm sure I have looked at it, but it has not. No. Just like a half to gift box. Oh, um Stonecastic. Okay. Special Forces, I think, is Who's the other time? one. Into mischief. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I guess she could be on any surface, so I get why they tried the dirt first, but obviously she seems to prefer the turf. But I think also last time out I kind of exposed her a little bit that she does need some pace to close into because she did not catch her stable mate. Right. So yeah, uh, she's not gonna get it here. I'm gonna I'm gonna play against against her out of out of the gimmicks and with California Angel being the price she will, I think uh, maybe make something happen. Yeah, well, I guess we should talk about the only other horse in the race that we haven't <laughs> talked about. Well, yeah, we, since we're doing since it. we even mentioned the longest shot on the board. Yeah, New Year's Eve. What do you think? Nah. Nah. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, agree. just middle. Uh, I mean, I would say I like better than the international. Okay. Um, what are the morning lines? I don't have it written down because it was a, right. a quick yeah. turnaround here, but nine to ten. Okay. Yeah. Just. Yeah. I'd much rather focus on. To me, it's know the horse I want on top and yep. get the George Leonard underneath. All right. Well, I like the strategy. Um, I think that with her, she has finished ahead of McCulloch, Mikul- but that was at Churchill Downs. Right. So I feel like this is kind of like the looks of Santine, which is their stable just, mate, the, the chirp specialist. Yeah, and uh, well, which she, these things can turn on a dime with Barnes that have you know such depth, but he was winless uh, through the first four days in the meet. So um, you know maybe just kind of a Churchill cycle for his barn, and I don't like her to win anyway because uh, yeah. you know. It's, the respect I have for McCulloch in this spot specifically, but you know, then to me, it's like, okay, underneath even money with nine to two, when there's others I've mentioned, that will be a longer price. So yeah. All right. Well, now I'm going to tell everyone or ask everyone nicely to like, and subscribe before I ask you this question, because I want them committed of course. before well, not really go off the rails, but <laughs> you and I are both pen enthusiasts. Okay. And I was curious, do you match the ink color to the vibe of what you're writing about? No. Okay. Because I did purple for the queen. Oh, okay. I was going to say purple for the Breeders' Cup, but. Which I will do purple for the Breeders' Cup, I yes. See. And I like, I mean, I every day I rotate colors anyway, but I'll think like, oh, Saturday, big day at Keeneland, three turf races, including grade one. Green? I'll use green. Okay. So that kind of just reminds me of like how all the different colors were different subjects at school. Mm, I don't remember that. No? No. Like not pens, but like binders or right. notebooks. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, you I... You have children too. Yeah, I... No? Someone out there knows what I'm talking about. So, I mean... No, so it was just like a color-coded system. Like you're at school, like science is whatever color, and then math is usually red. And but then, didn't you have textbooks? Yeah, no, I mean like your notebooks for like actually writing stuff uh, down, or like a binder, like a three ring binder. Right. And you take all those okay. handouts and you're gonna put them in. Really? Yeah, no, didn't didn't wow. color code. Like you were, you didn't have to, or no, like didn't have to. to. Oh, we had to. Yeah. Yeah. And didn't choose to. A lot's changed. <laughs> I guess. No, I was big on the uh, like the five subject notebooks. Okay. That had the dividers. Oh, so it was like one notebook, everything. Yes. Did you take a lot of notes in school? I was a note taker, I would say. Yeah, you were pretty studious. That's a good word for it. <laughs> I definitely I retain. Like I retain as I write. So yeah, that, I do too. That's why this is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well. Somebody knows what I'm talking about with these color coded okay. notebooks and binders. And I well, guarantee. one day when we have the uh, education module of Horse Racing Nation, we, yeah, will, we'll have, be we will have some options for color coding yeah. various topics. But in the meantime, 
I am hoping that I am in a position and I'm playing in the contest Saturday and I would love it if a Makula California Angel Exacta got me the win. All right. Well, I mean, you've had some success in those contests yeah. before, so I, I'll, I'll be rooting some for you. Some not successes. It happens. Um, you still owe us all pizza. I do. And I owe you 20 bucks. Me too. And lunch. And lunch. What was the lunch for? Uh, for our big Labor Day sales. Oh, yes. Okay. So. Ed's got dues to pay. And I owe Jonathan Stetton lunch. I owe Andy so Villanueva owe lunch. David Lovich, too. I owe David. <laughs> You owe David dinner, I'm, right? I'm lucky I have my knees. <laughs> People are going to come for you. I know. All right. Well, the debts are mounting, so I better uh, get back better to get work. to work. It's payday. You are ahead, though, I will say, in the um, head-to-head top picks for Keeneland by about $2. Very close, though. Yes. Um, our Yours are out on the website. Mine are out on yes. Twitter. So you can follow along and see who wins. And maybe you can clear some debts by the end of the meet. Let's hope. Oh, boy. All right. Well, thanks for watching, liking, and subscribing. There's more content coming out this week still. Uh, Pick 6 mandatory payout mm. at Santa Anita on Saturday. I'll have a video about that as well as the weekly Out on the On video segment, which, even though one of those horses did scratch out of the British Futurity, he was 50 Ran to back there. and Ran one, back yesterday yeah. and was second at 10 to 1. So even if that uh, the scratches happen in those videos, there's still some valuable information somewhere in there. I know it. You know it. I'll be watching. I'll be getting the notification. You will. All right. So you have pick six video to come. Mm -hmm. Outrun the odds. Mm -hmm. Breeders Cup for us next week. Yeah. More uh, More reviewing of that. Yeah. Yeah, Chatter. So. All right. Well. That's that. I'm going to make some dinner reservations. (laughs) And uh, hopefully uh, look forward to a big QE2. Well, well, you'll see Sarah later this week. Mm -hmm. You'll see me next week. Good luck.